poem, When We Remember. We can shed tears that they are gone, or we can smile because they have lived. We can close our eyes and pray that they will come back. Or we can open our eyes and see all that they have left. Our hearts can be empty because we can't see them. Or we can be full of the love that we shared. We can turn our backs on tomorrow and live yesterday. Or we can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. We can remember them and only that they are gone, or we can cherish their memory and let them live on. We can cry and close our minds, be empty and turn off, turn our backs, or we can do what they would want, smile, open our eyes, love, and go on. Thank you for joining us tonight at this memorial illumination. What a special time to come together to honor the ones that we lost, the ones that we loved. My name is Ron Cottrell. I'm very lucky to be the president and CEO of Hospice of the Piedmont. We wish that we could come together in person, but because of COVID, we have to do this virtually. So, we would like to extend our handshake, our hug to you virtually, as we come together to remember those that we have loved and lost. Even coming together virtually, that sense of community, we can draw strength. We do have something in common, even participating in this uh, virtual experience together, knowing that we have shared the loss of a loved one. Let's try to find comfort in memories that we have. During the pandemic, when we are shuttered in, this is very challenging. And it's great when we can share our grief journey with others, with family and friends. So I encourage each of you to continue to um, connect with your friends and family. And this resiliency will come over time. But if you need additional help too, Hospice of the Piedmont wants to share your grief journey with you. We do have expert grief counselors that can be helpful to you. All you have to do is reach out to us, call our number 434-817-6900, and there's people there that want to be helpful to you. So if it's right for you, a little extra support, please reach out to us. 434-817-6900. Coming together at this event, let's take a sense of comfort, a sense of peace, and a sense of strength as we do come together in the fond memories that we have of those that we have loved. Thank you for sharing this experience with us, and uh, God bless you. Please respond, their light still shines after each verse. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, their light still shines. In the opening of the buds and in the rebirth of spring, their light still shines. At the blueness of the skies and in the warmth of summer, their light still shines at the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of autumn, their light still shines. At the beginning of the new year and when it ends, their light still shines. When we are lost and sick at heart, their light still shines. When we have joys we yearn to share, their light still shines. As long as we live, they too shall live, for they are now a part of us. Their light still shines. As we light these lights, their light still shines. 
for we carry the light of their lives within us. Their flame still glows and will continue to glow in our hearts forever. May you find joy in the season. May you find peace in the reason. May you go in peace. Hi, I'm Tim Short, and I'm an Associate Medical Director for Hospice of the Piedmont and the Director of the Education Institute. But I'm speaking to you from the heart as a family member, um, having benefited from the services of Hospice of the Piedmont, actually, sadly, multiple times with my own family. I was called to the ICU by the Medical Director of the ICU for a family meeting. A family was in crisis, Things weren't going well. And when I walked into the room, there was a young man in his early 50s in the bed and his wife on the other side of the bed, also in her early 50s. She was frightened. She was overwhelmed by the bank of IV pumps and monitors and tubes. And he was withdrawn and a little groggy, subdued and somewhat surrendered to a failing liver. There was no alcohol in the picture. There was no injury to the liver. It was simply an unfair and devastating decline at much too young an age. And it was also of note who was not there in the room, his teenage daughter, who was leaning into a career in nursing, likely the result of a chronically ill father. 10 months earlier, they were in this same ICU a sudden and unexpected admission occurred the day before they were to be married. They were supposed to get married at their brother's home in a small intimate family wedding. Instead, they were married in an ICU room. She wearing an isolation gown and he wearing a patient gown. The nurses decorated the hallway and the room and formed a reception line that she walked down from the patient waiting room to the, his ICU room. That room was converted to a wedding chapel. The ICU director began to explain to them that our treatments were no longer offering a hope of a meaningful recovery and that he was afraid they were prolonging a condition that he might not want to prolong. In fact, he was afraid that they were prolonging his dying more than prolonging his living. We couldn't change that harsh reality, but we had an opportunity to change what his care would look like, what their care would look like going forward. Where would he be? What would be the focus of that care? Who would be around him and support him in his days? His wife began to cry, and so the patient began to cry. And I stood paralyzed in that space of suffering and loss. I stood on the other side of the bed from the wife as she cried and the nurse hugged her and consoled her. I stood with no words that could come to offer consolation and fully exposed to that deep sense of impending loss that was filling the room. And then they turned to me and said, Tim, what should we do? It was my sister who looked at me through tearful eyes and her husband of 10 months. What do we do? Where do we go from here? What's going to happen? They were in utter loss and they needed guidance. They needed protection. They needed each other most of all. They needed help in talking to their daughter and they needed time to say their goodbyes. They needed hospice. I said to them, there's two things I can say to you with confidence going forward. We won't let you suffer. We will do anything and everything to assure your comfort. 
and you won't be alone in this. The best way to assure you of that is through hospice support. He was transferred that day from the ICU bed to the inpatient hospice unit at Hospice of the Piedmont. And that room became a chapel of sorts as well, a place of holy waiting, a place where what didn't really matter anymore was left at the door. And what mattered most filled that room and spilled out into the hallways. What mattered most was love, was forgiveness, was gratitude, was hope, was faith, was these relationships of love in the room. Like little working bees, the nurses and the staff seem to carry love in and out of that room and cross-pollinate it with every room that they went into before and after. With that same gentle being or love of being present, of helping those in the rooms to know they weren't alone in this frightening and foreign space. In a week or so, David died in that room. I think of him every time I visit another patient in that same room when I return to the center. Just as I pause outside his door before entering to see him, I would say a prayer that I might be truly present to him and into this space. And I do that now before I enter the room with any patients I see in that room. I carry his story into their story, just as I carry their story into my story. Our story at Hospice of the Piedmont is a story of hope. It's a story of living. It's a story of loving. It's a story of being, of being with others in that sacred space of being with others to their last breath, assuring their comfort and assuring them that they are not alone and their family will not be alone in their loss. Hospice of the Piedmont tended to David's physical needs beautifully and completely. They tended to my sister's emotional needs. They tended to their daughter's distressing needs and they tended to his spiritual needs as well. Like many of you listening, I am a grateful family member to HOP. Like many of you listening, I still struggle in my losses. Like many of you listening, I have a story I can live with and carry forward in my life and my work, largely because of the kindness, the guidance, the love and the support of the good people at Hospice of the Piedmont. Together, we pause in these moments to remember our loved ones, to honor them in that remembering, and to be together in that remembering. Thank you for allowing me to share my story and for sharing your stories with us at Hospice of the Piedmont. There are stars whose radiance is visible on earth, though they have long been extinct. We light a candle for each star their hearts wished upon. Blessed is the light within the world. There are people whose brilliance continues to light the world, but they are no longer among the living. We light a candle for the sound of their laughter echoing still in our hearts. Blessed is the light within each person. So it may be with our loved ones, though they no longer walk among us, may their light continue to shine within the world. We light a candle for the lessons they learned and in return shared. Blessed is the light within the world. May their memory illuminate those who love them. May they continue to strengthen us throughout our lives. We light a candle for love. Blessed is the light within each person. May the memory of the person whose name you mention, offer you comfort. I welcome you to state your loved one's name 
as we remember these lights and candles in honor and memory of them. Tonight we come together as a community to remember and celebrate the lives and memories of those who have gone before us. Hospice of the Piedmont has been privileged to be entrusted with the care of many of your loved ones, and we are pleased to celebrate this memorial celebration with you. May we face each day with courage, strength, and hope. May nothing destroy what we have shared. May nothing erase our memories of joy. May all the good of the past overcome the fear of the future. May our present grief become a lifelong gratitude. And may we find peace and comfort. <laughs> 